way. He supports the Second Amendment, supports the right to bear arms. He lost his daughter to an evil maniac, and he says we've got to pass common sense legislation that would prohibit guns from winding up in the in the hands such as that lunatic uh, reporter. I understand it's a complex issue. I understand that it's very hard to determine who's mentally ill, and the lawyers will step in. Got it. But something has to be done to stop the gun violence. Now, the first thing I would do is stop the medication violence. The first thing I would do is hold drug companies responsible who are dishing out antipsychotic medication uh, all too frequently. And I'll be very honest with you. There have been too many deaths, uh, murders rather, by people on anti uh, antidepressants, for, for example. You don't know that there are side effects to antidepressants. Well, one of them happens to be issues like this, incidents like this, as are suicides. And I think that there needs to be a blue uh, a commission, whatever. You're going to get some schmucks from the Congress to do anything. We need to have a rational discussion about the dangerous side effects of antidepressants to start with. Because most, if not all, of these shootings were uh, enacted by individuals who were on antidepressants, incidentally. I'd like to get some calls on that, so I'd ask my call screener to eliminate some of the bum stories and get, get up some of the gun, nut, uh, the gun nut stories. Let's go back to the bum story. WBAP, Adam, go ahead on the uh, homeless horror stories. What's on your mind? Yeah, thanks, Dr. Savage. I, uh, I'm a sales marketing executive, and I uh, you know, travel and attend uh, conferences in different cities, and some of them are you know, out of metro areas, but I uh, had the uh, opportunity to go to San Francisco. It was uh, probably the second time I've been in the city just uh -huh. this uh, last fall. And it uh -huh. happened to coincide with when the uh, the Giants, you know, won the World Series. And so downtown they had the big parade. And it was all nice, uh -huh. but, you know, just thousands of people there. And so I, uh, you know, went away from the conference to kind of you know, enjoy, you know, the, the uh, celebration and, and so forth. And I was amazed just as I was walking around. And, of course, you know, traffic was a mess. But I was amazed just kind of as I was going through side streets and stuff, kind of navigating around. Just, you know, yeah, just what you've been talking about. Just, you know, shocked. And, and like I said, I've been... You, you, mean, you mean the armies of the bums, the armies of bums that are in the city? Yeah, yeah, I, I, well, you know, just like, you know, like, I mean, it just smelled like a sewer, and I could see... That's it, horrible. You know, I, it's horrible. I, 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 I have an apartment in the city. I won't even go to it now. It stinks down in the Embarcadero. And, it and, stinks. And, the city is responsible for it. They should be cleaning the streets. They should be cleaning the streets of the bums. They should put them into a mental care facilities that they desperately need. They should reopen Napa, Napa State Mental Hospital. They need to get them off the streets and they need to do it right away. There's no question about it. San Francisco is a dying city as a result of this. Yeah, I feel, Thank I you feel for the call. I mean, I've said it over and over again. Are they going to listen? Do they care that the only man in the local media who ever made it nationally is now blowing the whistle on his hometown. They can only ignore me for so long in this city. But I intend to embarrass the people who run the city until they do something about it. The city stinks, and it stinks on dry ice, as my father would say. And it's time for the get to get the bums off the streets, clean up the streets, put the San Francisco uh, Sanitation Department to work, make them clean up the, the animal droppings. It's worse than the San Francisco Zoo. The zoo is cleaner than the streets. KSFO, Paul. Homeless horror story. Go ahead, please. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my call, Michael Savage. Uh, I think our politicians are really uh, dropping the ball on this. Jerry Brown rather have his bullet train to, than to uh, even talk about the homeless situation. Yes, Jerry Brown's uh, bullet train, which is a train to nowhere, is nothing but a financial boondoggle. It's outright highway robbery. Yeah, a lot could be done with that money otherwise. I used to be an officer, and I'd, I'd take inmates into San Francisco, and, and we'd clean up after, after the homeless and under the overpasses and the little crevices when you had to really watch. Oh, they made you clean up the bum, the bum encampments? You had to clean it up? The cops do that? Not the cops, the inmates. I'd take a crew of inmates and, uh, with Caltrans. And, uh, the you know, I'm, I'm surprised that the inmates would agree to do that. Do they agree to do it, or they do it just to get out of jail for a day? Um, yeah, they, it was a job for them. It, it was, uh, you know, they were uh, low-level inmates. and uh, Yeah, but to think about subjecting them to human waste like this is pretty sad that an inmate would be reduced to that level. I would think the San Francisco City, uh, Sanitation Department should have that job, don't you? Well, I I do, and you, but you know what? We we would clean up. We'd I'd have the inmates go in and clean it all up. Sheriff Department would be there, 
And I'd say now, and the homeless would just would bag up all their stuff and put it in their shopping carts, and they'd move to the sidewalk. And I'd say, okay, now, what happens when we leave? And the sheriff says, well, they just move right back underneath the bridge. They just no, liberalism back. is a mental disorder. Ultra tolerance is killing us. I've been saying it for 21 years. Maybe someone will start listening to me. FTL, Chris, topic, please. How you doing, sir? Um, the Second Amendment and the gun rights and what happened yesterday on uh, the shooting of the TV anchors. Um, I am pro-Second Amendment. I agree that there should be maybe some better restrictions on people getting guns, but to limit to a test or to a mental thing, what would I have to miss answer a question wrong, and I would be, you know, not eligible to get a gun because of this one answer to this one question. Um, I don't think that would be right. I wouldn't say that the uh, the question of whether a person is mentally ill can uh, be based upon a single question. I think it's a very important problem. The mental health problem is the number one problem with guns, and I frankly do not want the guns in the hands of mentally ill people. You don't want them in the hands of nuts, do you? No, sir. I want the hands in, I want the guns in hands of people like myself and other law-abiding citizens. I understand, but how are we going to get the guns out of the hands of the nuts? That's what I'm asking. The father of the girl who was shot said he supports the Second Amendment. He believes people have a right to bear arms. But we have to understand there is now a problem in America. And I'm asking on this talk show, a national show, how are we going to solve the problem? It's easy for the Second Amendment absolutists to say no, no controls whatsoever because it's a slippery slope. Uh, Chicago has strict gun laws, and there's still a lot of gun crime, right? That's, that's a given. But we're talking about getting down to the bottom of the mentally ill people. How do we keep the hands out of mentally ill people? I don't understand how anyone could disagree with this. There okay. must be a way to do it. Now we're with the psychiatrist to make it through the test, the evaluation part, to get it, if that was the case. Um, you know, it's, like you said, it's a slippery uh, slope. So It is a slippery slope. When you give government any power, they abuse it. I understand that. And then there's the issue of what is mentally ill. Who's going to write the test? Who's going to administer the test? That's another problem. And I'm not being facetious when I say that if I define mentally ill or mentally unstable as someone on antidepressants, I'm sorry to tell you that would take out 50% of the police in America who are on antidepressants, and shockingly, probably one-third or more of the U.S. military would not be allowed to bear arms if that was the definition. So it's a real issue right now. But I do know that antidepressants very often result in homicidal behavior and or suicidal behavior. That's a fact in the literature. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Look, we were having a, a, a vigorous discussion today on the Savage Nation about San Francisco's out-of-control homeless problem and the city managers, fathers, whatever you want to call them, are doing nothing about typical liberalism. They're sweeping it under the rug, but it's now reached a national level. It's a national scandal, defecating in the street, urinating in the streets, attacking people in the streets. It has to be solved. We're also talking about the, um, the maniac reporter who shot that young lady and the uh, sound man. And the young lady's father going on television today saying that he supports the Second Amendment, he supports the right to bear arms, but he absolutely feels that guns should be kept out of the hands of the mentally ill. How can you disagree with that? The problem is, how do you define the mentally ill? I think we need to get rid of the medication uh, epidemic. I think that antipsychotic, antidepressants in particular medications are all too frequently prescribed. And I believe that's as big a part of the problem as are the guns themselves. So let's leave it at that for now. I want to give you an update for those of you who have been listening to me all day today. <clears throat> During the first hour of the show, I had technical breakdowns. I just got a report that Level 3, one of the country's top Internet providers, experienced a widespread outage in North America that started about 1 p.m. Eastern time. And this affected the Savage Nation radio show because we could not connect to my call screener, amongst other things. So that's uh, a, an Internet problem. According to this, I don't really know what, it, what that really means. Level 3 outage map 
shows a huge outage in the East Coast, uh, San Francisco to Los Angeles, the Midwest. The East Coast looks like it was blacked out from Chicago or affected Chicago up until Maine. Florida was hit with it. I really don't know what caused all of this. And we don't know whether it's uh, foreign hacking, widespread outage in North America that started today, 1 p.m. Eastern. Well, my friends, who knows what's going on? 855-407-282. Let's go to KBET Radio. David, welcome to the program. What's your topic? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, Mike, I consider you uh, my friend. I'm in the, uh, I've got a, a bum story for you. Well, go ahead. Uh, Do it quickly. Do it quickly. Uh, yes, very quickly. Uh, I was on the uh, Las Vegas Strip. Uh, oh, by the way, I did uh, read your uh, Countdown of Mecca. Great book. Okay. It is a great book. It's a very, very great book. It should be a movie, but because it shows the dangers of Islamists, the boys of Hollywood won't touch it. They're waiting for a, mo a, a book that shows the dangers of the uh, the evil white privilegers. Go ahead. What's on your mind? That's a shame. Uh, I was on the. Uh, I had my mother. Uh, she's elderly, and she has passed on. This was about a year ago. We we're walking down the strip. Uh, some big bully, uh, about a six foot uh, size. Uh, I'm I'm fairly short. My mother was only about five foot five. Uh, he uh, sh he came up to uh, her and uh, just accosted her and actually pushed her. She's racked with uh, uh, arthritis. Well, uh, all right. So well, so who stopped the homeless bum from attacking your mother? Did anyone intervene? No, no. We were in kind of a uh, the, uh, secluded area. Well, not so secluded, but uh, you see, well, that's society today. In a nutshell, uh, in the bright lights, in the fancy areas, you don't see it. You step slightly off the grid and you confront the jungle. And that, my friends, is the sum total of the whole story. The zanies, the crazies, the aggressive ones are just at the perimeters of our society and they're starting to get more aggressive. Yes, we can stop it, but Barbara says no, we cannot. Barbara, you'll have the last word. Fire away 30 seconds or less in the Savage Nation. Hello, Michael. I just wanted to say I, I agree something should be done. I don't know if you can do it through the mental illness issue. And, and my reason for thinking this is uh, because, one, perhaps you get a gun before you're mentally ill. Maybe you have lived a normal life. You've acquired guns legally. And perhaps you live alone or with a family, but something happens. You maybe go to Now you see you're raising a very interesting point. People could buy a gun years before they become mentally ill. Right. So then how do you de determine? So what is the determinant as to when a person should not have a gun? Well, I, I don't know. And that's what I'm saying. I don't know that you can determine. I mean, obviously, if you become mentally ill, hopefully your family and friends or someone would uh, yeah, do something well, about it. I don't well, that guy in Virginia certainly didn't have a family reporting his his insanity. That's the problem. And that's the fact that the show is over. Headline uh, on the Drudge Report just came out. Washington Post is reporting how Huma operated at the center of the Clinton universe. They're trying to make her the fall guy. I knew it. In other words, Hillary Clinton is now throwing Huma Abedin to the wolves. In order to save herself and her campaign, she's throwing her most trusted, loyal aide to the wolves. Nice going, Hillary. Good night and good luck. It's the Savage Nation signing off.